So you say that anxiety can turn into a disorder. Can you yeah. tell us how how does anxiety turn into a disorder, and how do we recognize these as this as a disorder? Okay. When a normal reaction becomes a disorder, there are three things that are different. One is that the response is uh, inappropriate. The response is a no not a normal response you would expect in that situation. Uh, so, for example, you have this uh, reaction without any reason at all. So, that's uh, one way it becomes a disorder. And secondly, it is excessive. It is excessive in proportion to the problem. And thirdly, it lasts longer. It lasts longer. And uh, well, there's a fourth difference. The, your functioning is seriously impaired. Your normal day-to-day -day activities are seriously impaired because of this uh, state of anxiety. However, if it's a little anxiety, that will actually improve your performance before, because, I mean, if, if there's an exam and you're not anxious, you will not study. So your little bit of anxiety is normal and necessary. But when it becomes a disorder, then it interferes with our function. So that's how we determine when anxiety becomes a disorder. It's not always a clear dividing line, but however, of course, when it's excessive, you know it's a disorder. And how are there many anxiety disorders? How do you separate one anxiety disorder from another? Yes, uh, there are several, and we actually divide them according to the time duration and the reason for the anxiety. So let me explain. So out of the anxiety disorders, uh, the common, not the common one, the, there's one called generalized anxiety disorder, where you are anxious most of the time for no particular reason, and that lasts for months and months, and that's called generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD for short. And then, of course, we get the shorter-term anxieties, the anxieties that last for a shorter time. And uh, some of these anxieties are in response to, uh, well, I said it's like a stress, but it's in response to an identifiable event uh, or stimulus. It can be in the mind also, the stimulus. Uh, so these are called uh, phobias. So phobias are fears that we have for various things. And that's one of the commonest of problems of a human being, phobias. Now, all of us have phobias. None are exempt. That doesn't mean all of us have a mental disorder. Uh, a phobia becomes a disorder when it seriously interferes with your normal day-to-day -day functioning. So, for example, if you are fearful of snakes, it's quite all right. It's a very common phobia. However, if you have to work with snakes, for example, if you are a zookeeper, uh, then that will interfere with your work. So, then it becomes a disorder. So, it's a relative thing. So, the, so we get the long-term generalized anxiety disorders. And then we get the shorter term ones. And one of the group is called phobias, which is a specific fear of uh, event or or a situation and uh, those are called uh, well we can divide the phobias also into several types so for example we get the simple phobias of childhood which are very common fear of darkness fear of insects and so forth and uh, then we get the another one which uh, rises in adolescence mostly called social phobia now, social shyness is a normal thing, and most adolescents become a bit awkward in their, when they become adolescents. However, when it becomes excessive and interferes with your work, such as going to university or attending a lecture or walking to a crowded hall uh, and you are unable to do that, uh, that becomes a social phobia. And then you get a third kind of phobia, which is uh, kind of different. It's called agor agoraphobia. agoraphobia. It, it comes from the Greek, agora meaning marketplace. So it means, a direct translation means fear of the marketplace, but actually it means fear of open spaces or fear of a situation where you are not in a contained environment. Let me explain that. So this fear arises usually in uh, females uh, around 35 years. And what happens is they fear going out in buses, crowded buses especially, or in situations where they feel that, you know, there's nobody to take care of them if something happens. <clears throat> so they are in a crowd, but they are alone. 
So in a bus, they feel that if they faint or fall, nobody will help them. So this fear of insecurity, and it can become quite severe to the extent they will not even leave the house. And that's called the housebound syndrome. And that's a severe form of agoraphobia. So these are the three kinds of phobias, uh, sim simple phobias, and then uh, social phobia and uh, agoraphobia. And then we give another very short, a high intensity anxiety problem called uh, panic disorder. Now, panic attack is actually not quite abnormal. I mean, it usually means what it says, panic attack. You suddenly feel uh, that uh, something terrible is going to happen, that you might fall, you might die, you might collapse, you know, that kind of feeling which you will get. But here the difference is that this is not in response to an observable event. There's nothing happening around you, but it comes out of the blue. And then it's uh, not a normal thing. So suddenly you have this feeling that you might even die. And uh, that's a very frightening feeling. And that is not due to any organic problem. It's just purely mental. And that's called a panic disorder. It usually lasts about five to 10 minutes and it then goes off. However, if it happens recurrently, uh, several times a week, then we call it a disorder. So this is the kind of spectrum of anxiety disorders that we get in uh, in psychiatry